Yeah, no, I, I want to come back also to what you were saying about um, the predictive power of IQ and conscientiousness, which I don't dispute, and I'm also not one of these people who suffers under the delusion that these things are totally, open quotes, socially determined, close quotes. I mean, I understand and believe that they have high heritability and identifiable genetic um, sources in that variability and so on. But, you know, the standard old joke used to be, you can tell me because you know more about personality psychology than I do, the standard old joke used to be that everything's 50% heritable, that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that pretty much anything that you can measure as a trait that has any stability within the lifetime also turns out to have a heritability somewhere near 0.5. But there's the other 0.5. Um, you know, some people have low IQs because they were exposed to too much lead in infancy. Um, yeah. You know, um, I believe that conscientiousness can probably be, um, well, I, I believe you suggested earlier that we know something about this already, about developmental determinants of, of shifts in conscientiousness. And uh, so, you know, we have to caution ourselves against talking about these individual difference factors as if they are immutable attributes of individuals that are going to um, undermine any sort of progressive improvement of, of yeah, circumstances well, for people are, 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 are going to create bad byproducts of attempts to produce social justice. It's just going to, you know, you're going to leave your, your dumb, unconscientious people out there being parasites or something. Well, you know, um, there, there is, of course, decent evidence that, that, that there are sociocultural effects on IQ. I mean, the Flynn effect, which is named after the man who who described the, the 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 phenomena indicates that the average IQ has been increasing quite substantially over the last hundred years and the reason for that no one knows for sure but one of the putative reasons for that is that we've lifted the bottom out of catastrophe so yeah. there aren't people whose IQs are stunted by by exposure to zero information during critical developmental periods and who didn't get enough to eat. Yeah, so I was going to say severe malnutrition, never right. mind zero information, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So we've, we've wiped out, in, in many ways, we've wiped out the worst effects of privation. And that's increasingly true as well on, on the worldwide scale, worldwide yeah. uh, stage. You know, there's about 150,000 people a day right now being lifted out of absolute poverty by UN standards, the fastest improvement in the history of the world by a huge margin, and also about 300,000 people a day being hooked up to the electrical grid. So we are making some progress removing the absolute privation problem, which is a non-trivial yes. problem. The problem with most of the attempts to raise IQ is that they don't change the variance in IQ. They tend to raise the average IQ across the population. And that leaves the inequality, IQ inequality problem basically untouched. So there have been studies trying to estimate how much socioeconomic um, pressure, let's say, you have to place on an individual to raise their IQ. Lowering it's easy, right? Because making yeah. something worse is always easier than making something better. But yeah. if I remember correctly, if you take a, an identical twin who's adopted out at birth, in order to produce a 15-point increase in IQ compared to the other twin, which is a one standard deviation increase, and about the same as the average difference between a university student in an in a average state college and an average high school student, you have to move the one twin from the fifth percentile of socioeconomic status to the 95th percentile. So you need about a three standard deviation improvement in socioeconomic conditions to produce a one standard deviation improvement in IQ. So it looks like it can be done, but it's but it's expensive, you know. And, and yeah, I see. I see what you're saying. I'm kind of surprised, um, actually. I mean, given you know, we just mentioned malnutrition as one possible source of low IQ, one possible developmental source. I'm kind of surprised that. Uh, to the degree that the Flynn effect might be due to things like a reduction of the number of people exposed to severe malnutrition, that it wouldn't have also simultaneously truncated the variance a little bit. Um, that seems slightly surprising. Well, it has truncated. So, let, let me restate that. It has truncated. It has truncated the variance, although the data on that isn't clear, isn't as clear. Uh -huh. So, but but I, I do believe that it's a reasonable inference to make that the variance has been truncated. It's also hidden to some degree because 
the IQ tests are always renormed to keep the variance at a standard 15 points. Yes. So, so it makes it difficult to look retrospectively and see what's happened to the variance. So, but uh, the other problem too is that you know you get these stories now and then about these companies that come out with claims that their brain exercises can improve IQ, and the literature on that is damn dismal. I can tell you, it's that the holy grail is to produce cognitive exercises that produce a legitimate impact on fluid intelligence, and and like there has been a lot of work done on that, and. The answer so far is that it doesn't work. So what about so, the what about the video gaming? I mean, I know there has been the suggestion that playing video games actually improves at least some aspects of intelligence. Yeah, well, there's a couple of studies that indicated that video games might improve spatial intelligence, but but yeah. here's the problem, and and I think this is this is a critical problem and perhaps an insoluble one, or at least no one solved it. Is that what you get is that if you, if you exercise yourself substantially on a given game, you can radically accelerate your performance in the game. So you can get much better at those specific skills. Sure. But you don't get generalization across cognitive sets, which is what you're really hoping for. Because yeah, I thought, game, I thought that was the claim from some of these. Yeah, well, they, they have shown some increases in spatial IQ, but there's not very many studies. And I would say they're far overbalanced by the other side of the yeah. research equation, which continually says, and I've looked at this because I'm really interested in the improvement of IQ. I mean, that's that's the holy grail in some sense, and that, and and uh, the, the 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 overwhelming preponderance of evidence suggests that you don't get generalization outside the narrow domain. Now, okay. why that is, and even this, it's even worse, say, eh? because you might say, well. Imagine that you could take five different domains of intelligence still associated tightly with, with G and you had people practice routines in all five dimensions. Maybe you'd get generalization under those circumstances and the, 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 the results of the research attempting that indicate that no, as soon as you move away from those specific practice instances, you don't get generalization. 